Hello, this is Angela Anderson with Thankful Art. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own color mixing guide using a DecoArt Traditions palette sampler set. Um, if you enjoy it, please subscribe. The DecoArt Artist palette sampler set comes with 10 colors, plus a glazing, medium, and an extender. They're professional quality acrylics. So I've set out a little grid with 11 by 11 squares. So I, I left one extra for our glaze. And the colors in this set are red violet, naphthol red light, raw sienna, Hansa yellow, thalo green, blue shade, a thalo blue, and ultramarine blue, and raw umber, carbon black, and opaque white, and then the glazing medium. So you don't have to do your grids this way, but I find it helpful to um, have a little system for filling in my colors and then I can refer back to them and kind of remember what the colors look like uh, when they're wet down or thinned out and what they look like when they're full strength. So that's what you're doing, I'm showing here. The glazing medium just sort of thins out the paint so that you can kind of see the undertones in it. And then there's a little spot for each of the solid colors to go also. And I probably would have preferred if I'd left the top whole section with just the solid colors and did the glazing just along the sides. Um, you can see I forgot to do this side part here, fill in my glaze along the far edge, so I did that later. But um, anyhow, I, I do this usually when I have a new paint I have a chart that I keep up on my wall that has all of my paints. Every time I buy a new paint, I add it to the chart because it's really invaluable. You've got to kind of be able to see the colors and they never really look the same in the on the bottle as they do uh, on paper or on a canvas. So, And I'm hoping you'll be able to see here too that some colors like your reds, um, this red in particular, the red violet, has much more purple tones to it than this naphthol red light does. And so when you go to mix it to make like a purple, um, the naphthol red light has so much orange in it, or is closer to an orange, that when you mix it with your blues, it really doesn't turn into a purple at all. And we'll show you that here in a minute. Um, I'm just mainly here filling in all of my different colors and I'm adding white to each one. And you can see how they're very similar to the glaze colors. Adding white to your color will add, make a tint and adding the glaze makes a transparent effect. So although they look similar on the paper, your opaque white tints with your color will actually cover over completely your undercolors, whereas the glaze would be on top of your undercolors and you'd still be able to see through it. And here I'm just adding back in those glazes onto the side there where I forgot to put them the first time. The colors along the top of the chart are going to be our mixing colors, and the colors along the side are the dominant colors. Um, so you'll notice that when I mix um, these, I'm putting them into two different boxes. Each color will have, each color mix will have two different boxes to fill, and the first one will be the dominant color along that row, and then the second one will be um, along the mixing color box. You'll see as we go along here how that works, but um, you're just going to mix. So here I'm mixing carbon black, and then I'm going back in and mixing a little bit more red violet for the second box. I'm mixing naphthol red light with black and then mixing a little bit more of the red to fill in my second box down there. And I'm just going to keep going and fill in each row with each different color 
Um, this can be a little bit tedious, but you'll be so glad that you did it later because um, it's so nice to be able to refer back and, re and know exactly how the colors are going to um, react when you mix them before you even get started. It's just a great way to familiarize yourself with color mixing. Colors do a lot of uh, odd and interesting things that you might not expect when you mix them. Um, like if you look up there, the carbon black and the yellow made sort of a green, which you wouldn't think of yellow and black making a green. So um, just things like that, you really kind of can create some really interesting um, colors just by playing with them like this and creating yourself a little chart. So I would highly recommend that you um, do this. Raw Umber is a great color to use for shadows. So you can see here that each of the colors that I'm mixing with it, they um, the when I add the Raw Umber, they kind of retain um, most of the same qualities, but they're just grayed out a little bit. So they'd be perfect for um, using as a shadow color um, instead of black. Like if you wanted a really, really deep shadow color, you could add black to your main color. But if you want just a little bit more grayed effect, raw umber is a great color to choose. Ultramarine blue is a very purple toned blue. Um, so it will make some really lovely purples when you add it to your red violet and it makes a deep red reddish brown mixed with the naphthol red light. It also makes some lovely greens. The greens with ultramarine blue will be a little bit more gray than the greens that you'll make with the phthalo blue coming up. Um, they're a little bit, the phthalo blue already has green tones in it and because the ultramarine blue has those purples, um, it kind of counteracts with the yellows and the greens so that they, they turned a little bit more, um, gray. Here you can see the phthalo blue mixed with your two different reds. Um, the first one, the red violet, creates a deep dark purple but the other one creates almost a brown neutral gray color. But then when you add it with your yellows and greens, you get these really vibrant greens. And mixed with the phthalo green, you get turquoise. Now phthalo green with your reds, we're going to get some very neutral grays, almost a dark black when you add it to the naphthol red light. But phthalo green mixed with your yellows will create really vibrant greens. Almost an apple green mixed with that hands of yellow. Now here I probably could have gone a little bit more um, yellow in my mixtures. Yellow has a very low tinting strength, so you really have to use a lot more of it than your mixing color for you to get an accurate mix. So the oranges were very vibrant when mixed with the naphthol red light and the hands of yellow. Raw sienna mixed with your colors will give you like a neutral yellow. So they'll be perfect for shadowing any of your yellow colors. Naphthol red light and the red violet mixed together made a vibrant cherry red. And there we have it. Hope you've enjoyed this project today. Thank you for watching. And um, please subscribe and stop by my channel afterwards to check out my other art tutorials. Thank you to Deco Art for sending me their Traditions Artist Acrylic Palette Sampler Set to try out.